Hey there guys, today we're going to have a little look at setting up a weapon. Um, we'll deal with both one-handed and two-handed setups and we'll also consider the differences and the different situations that you might find yourself in and the different kind of setups you'd want. Now, the main thing you have to consider is whether your weapon is going to follow your arm or whether your arm is going to follow your weapon. Now with a one-handed sword Generally, you will have the sword follow the arm. So wherever the arm goes, the sword follows. This is a, a simpler setup. Um, but if you're dealing with a two-handed setup, you need the same setup as that. But you also need an extra, a, a, an extra place to attach another hand to. So um, what I mean by this is your your right hand for instance, if you're a right handed uh, character your right hand would be constrained here and then you would have another constraint here for your left hand so this one here would be attached to your arm so your arm would essentially be driving the whole sword action whereas this constraint here would have the secondary hand, so in this case the left hand the secondary hand would be attached to here so this guy essentially follows the action of the sword and in dealing with this setup you'll notice that the one-handed uh, the one-handed setup is essentially this first bit but if you're going to do a two-handed setup you then need to add on this second bit which is kind of the reverse of uh, of the first setup. <laughs> so it might sound complicated, uh, but we'll get into it and hopefully it will make a little bit more sense. Okay, so first thing we need to think about if we're taking a weapon into a game engine, we need to put some bones in there. The reason for this is if you bake all of your your animation, whether it's on constraints, whether it's on meshes, locators or groups, if all of that is baked down onto a joint, then that joint information just gets taken into engine and everything just works and functions properly. Game engines generally prefer it if you do this. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create a couple of joints. So I'm going to put my uh, my mode into rigging, go skeleton, create joints. I'm just going to make sure here that I put on projected centering. Uh, all this means is that wherever I click it tries to center the joint in the middle of that mesh so it just makes it a lot easier for this process so one joint there and let's have one at the end click enter and that should be our joints let's have a look uh, that's, that'll do um, it kinda doesn't matter all that much um, like I said it's just so that we can bake down the information at the end we're not really gonna animate these joints uh, they're going to be influenced by other groups and locators and you can mess around with that um, in whichever way you want. Uh, you might find that locators suit you better because you can see them or you might prefer groups just because they're quick and easy. So let's have a look at exactly what we need first. Okay so I've uh, I've placed this joint here um, just because it runs the length of this sword. Um, like I said, we're not really going to be using the joint itself, so it kind of doesn't matter where the pivot point is. But if you wanted to, you could move the pivot point to a, a more appropriate place. Um, that's up to you. So I'm going to say right hand would probably be here. So if I move the pivot point there, you'll notice now that the joint rotates from there. Uh, so if I were to rotate here, let's just check our axes are correct. Yep. So our sword will be rotating from there, which is about the right pivot point for the right hand. I assume so anyway. I have my right hand at the top of a sword hilt and the left hand at the bottom. So I imagine that's the best place to put the joint. Okay, so here's our joint. I'm just going to rename it. Um, you should always rename things, otherwise you can end up with a bit of a headache at the end. Okay, so... Rename complete. Now then, we need a few things going on here. So first off, we need a group 
that will be constrained and we also need another group that can act as an offset so because this is going to be the main the main setup that controls the sword we need to have our constraint at the top so that everything underneath it follows um, I'll show you what I mean by that okay so if I grab this guy and I just control G to make a group um, and let's call this guy just sword group so this guy here is essentially the top level controller so it now controls the joints but I also want an offset in there so I could I could just create an empty group down here so that again just control G you see now we have an empty group and I could chuck this guy under there so he's parented um, and use that as our offset I would then have to parent this guy under here as well so that we have the correct hierarchy so sword joints then our offset and then our top sword group so this guy here would be our offset so we can still move everything but the original position of the group maintains its position this is useful for when a uh, a sword is constrained to a hand and it doesn't line up exactly in the hand now once it's constrained so once this sword group top level would be constrained you cannot move it anymore so if we didn't have an offset then we wouldn't be able to reposition it um, so that's why we have an offset I'm gonna delete that null because I would rather have a locator I'm also going to reposition this pivot point just to make sure that it is placed exactly in the center of our joint. I just held down V in order to snap to uh, our joint here. It's also the same as just turning this on. Okay, so now our top level group rotates from where we want it to rotate from. I'm going to create a locator there he is there and I'm going to snap him to the uh, same position I want everything to uh, to rotate from the same place otherwise things get a little bit funky so there's our locator I'm going to call him um, let's call him main sword offset I'm calling him main meaning it's the primary mover and I'll call the second hand setup uh, secondary just so that I know that the main hand would be holding from here and the secondary would be the one that follows I could say right and left hand but I might have a left handed character so I'm just going with main so here's our main so sword offset I'm just going to freeze his transforms there and I'm going to make the scale of this locator a little bit larger so let's put him at 8 there okay so that that works fine for me so now we need to position him inside of the hierarchy so he needs to be underneath this sword group so if I grab this guy and chuck him in there and then again I just need to grab these joints and move them there I'm middle mouse moving here by the way it, it works like uh, like just doing a, a normal parent but it's just uh, a slightly quicker way of doing things okay so let's have a look at our setup now so we've got our main sword group the one that will be constrained now we have our offset and we have our joints underneath now currently we don't actually have the weapon attached but we we can do that very easily just want to check that everything works fine so if I move our main sword group there he is there so let's say we have just attached our constraint and it snapped up into this location but we want to move it back down to where it was so it's in the hand we now have our offset there which is not affected by the constraint in the same way that the original group is the original group would be stuck you can't move it but this offset we can move as much as we want and that's why we create it so that looks fine everything working exactly as we'd like it to so perfect let's just undo okay 
everything where we want it to be that's great so now we can just take this uh, sword and we can parent it underneath this joint so there we go so now when we move this group it moves the sword and also when we move the offset it also affects the sword so that is essentially our setup for a one-handed weapon um, that's as much as we need to worry about and if we weren't doing a two-handed setup that is literally all we need to worry about we have our top level controller here the sword group which will be the one that gets constrained um, and we have our second level controller here as an offset and then everything underneath is just there for the sake of um, being able to bake joints onto uh, bake animation onto the joints so I'm gonna go and save that and uh, let's call it assassin sword rig okay so there's our one-handed setup um, I can show you what I mean with the constraints um, just to illustrate my point I'll just make a a box and we'll just pretend that this guy is a hand or an arm, whatever remove his pivot point okay so there's our lovely hand um, and we want to constrain this sword group to the hand now when you're using constraints you do the opposite of parents so you select the source first and then the target so the source is this hand and the target is our group and we'll go constrain parent constrain and I'm gonna make sure that maintain offset is ticked off this means that the weapon will move to the location um, if we tick this then it will stay exactly where it is but we don't actually want that right now so tick it there it is now when I move this this arm the sword follows but I'm thinking hang on this the sword's not in the right location um, I want to actually have it kind of hang into the side so if I grab my offset now I can move my offset however I want and still my constraint works perfectly fine and this is this is the beauty of having our offset if I try to do the same with our main group things will go funny as soon as I animate so uh, our offset is there just to keep us all nice and clean and tidy okay so I can delete that fake handout now there we go back to where we were with our one-handed setup so if we're gonna create a two-handed setup we need another another um, another setup very similar to the one that we've got in our primary location um, but this time we need it to to be there for the second hand so currently we've got this guy for our, for our main hand and we're gonna make another setup here um, for our secondary and this one this first one here will lead so this guy here is the main controller of everything whereas the other one down here will follow so essentially we're gonna make the same setup but kind of in reverse okay so Part two of this video is now how to set up the second hand. So this is the the uh, controller that will follow the sword rather than lead it. This one follows. So it's a similar kind of process. Um, first off, let's let's create an empty group, and this will be our second hand, or just second second sword. We'll call it. Or maybe not because it doesn't like me to put a two first so let's do an underscore and then a two thank you so this is the guy that will be constrained and then we're going to create a locator and this will be our second hand offset
and then we want another empty group and this is what the hand will be constrained to and um, I'll show you what I mean by all of this in a moment so because this hand and the uh, group are in exactly the same location it's cool to just go on and parent them so I can s select the hand shift select the uh, locator and just click P for parent so they should be in exactly the same location okay and then we can do the same thing with these two so so we have a group at the top a locator in the middle and then a group at the bottom this group at the top is what we're going to constrain to the sword and this group at the bottom is what we will constrain the hand to so that means that this whole chain will follow whatever the sword does and this bottom constraint which the hand will be applied to will also follow this offset and so I'll just go in and show you what I mean so first off let's do our constraint and then we'll deal with putting the offset in the correct location so grab our sword joint here and shift select our, um, our second hand group and let's do a parent constraint maintain offset is taken off so that snaps to the right location now we have our locator and we need to just move him into a more appropriate position so let's go yeah about, about there and let's scale him up as well okay so our main group for this second hand is up here but our offset is in the right location which also means our hand constraint group is in the right place so let's just test this is working okay if we move our main group you'll see that our second hand group is following so is the offset and so is the um, the lowest group the one that will constrain the hand to so that's perfect now let's actually give ourselves a hand I know what you're thinking. That's a beautiful hand. Okay. So let's assume this is some complicated rig uh, with an IK system. Um, and we're going to constrain this to this hand constraint on the bottom here. So grab that first, then we'll select our cube, and same as always, parent constraint, making sure we don't have maintain offset on. There we go. So that cube now moves into the right place. But as you can see it sank right through the geometry whereas we want it to rest on top but fortunately we built in our offset so we can just move this hand to exactly where we want it to be and still when we move our whole sword everything follows and that's exactly how we want it to be and that more or less concludes our setup